Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by. I am so thankful that I finally figured out how to use this software. I can now create this podcast. I can do it regularly now that I'm in quarantine, you know, so I'll have something to do, keep me busy. But yes, this is the first episode of the Justin Jorgensen podcast. And what is this podcast, you may ask? Well, it essentially is going to be a podcast where I talk about movies, games, TV, news, etc. Just anything related to the world of entertainment is what I'm going to be talking about. And the first topic I wanted to talk about was one that not many people are talking about, but one that I hold very close to my heart, and that is why I love the original Spider-Man trilogy by Sam Raimi. Um, I do not think it gets enough praise, but that's just my opinion. And of course, this is my opinion, so if you don't agree with it, that's fine. I, you don't have to agree with it. That's what makes film so great, is that you don't have to agree with other people's opinions. So yes... The Spider-Man Trilogy by Sam Raimi, let's go. So the first reason is the characters. The characters, they all felt real. They all felt relatable. You could get behind most of them. Like, you know, you know what I mean. Um, Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane was amazing. Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. James Franco as Harry Osborn slash New Goblin. Then you have Willem Dafoe and Alfred Molina and... All of these other great actors playing these characters, um, great. And you can't have a great actor without a good script. And usually, most of the time, the script is excellent. Some parts, and mainly Spider-Man 3, the script can be a little silly, and yes, I understand that. But most of the time, the script was brilliant, and it made those actors, it, it let them shine. It let them show their true acting chops, and that's I'm really thankful that they had the writers and the actors that they had working on these films. Now, the second one, second reason, I should say, um, are the themes in the movie. You have, like, in one and two, primarily, you have hope and faith, and you have these heavy themes, and the themes are my favorite in, actually, Spider-Man 3, the theme of forgiveness, because... I think forgiveness is so overlooked in today's world, in, in even in the real world and in movies in general. Um, people don't talk about forgiveness enough. Forgiveness is so important because you don't want to live life with a grudge. You don't want to live life constantly being angry at somebody. You want to forgive them, even if it's hard for you. If it's hard for you in that moment, eventually it will become easier and it'll be a weight lifted off your heart, off of your soul, for forgiving people. And I think. It's executed greatly in Spider-Man 3, primarily Peter Parker slash Spider-Man forgiving Sandman for killing his uncle. Now, that was a great twist, and I thought that theme was incredible in that movie. Um, the third one, it kind of goes into the characters a little bit, but it is um, the relatable villains. Now, all of them are relatable, obviously, but I like bringing up my favorite villain of the trilogy, again, is from Spider-Man 3, Sandman. And... He's not my favorite just because he looks the coolest. It's not just because he is the coolest. I mean, but it's because he was, he's a, he's a human being. He's a person. He's just trying to get money for his daughter to help with the medical treatment to help her get better. He's just a guy. Like he says in the movie, he's not a bad person. He's just had bad luck. And I totally agree with him in that aspect. He obviously does some questionable things in the movie. Clearly, he's a bad guy. But I really did enjoy. And even in Spider-Man 2, um, Alfred Molina as Otto Octavius slash Dr. Octopus, he was just trying to create energy for the city. And yeah, eventually everything did get screwed up and he went a little insane because of the arms and stuff. And he turned into kind of a bad guy. But he never wanted to be a bad guy. He never, that was never his plan. His plan was just to create renewable energy for the entire city, just like he told Peter in the beginning of the movie. It was never his primary focus or goal to become a villain. So you could get behind him that he would love. He had a wife, Rosie, and she was actually, she was great in that movie too. She didn't get much screen time, but he had, yeah, he had a wife. He had a house. He was a person. He wasn't just some big CGI bad guy that our hero had to go up against. He wasn't just some brute force that our hero had to go up against. He was a person. He was a living human being with real problems. And I think we can all relate to that. And the fourth reason is the visual effects. Now, it's so easy to say, like, 
Star Wars Episode Two, for example. It's not a great movie, but the visuals are pretty to look at, so I like it. No, that's not what I'm saying. The visuals just made it so much easier. Okay, let me back up. The visuals were great in those movies, yes. They were a little questionable in one, but it was a 2002 movie, so that's that's to be expected. But they used them sparingly. I like to compare Thor Ragnarok. My uncle pointed something out in Thor Ragnarok that they used so much CGI and so much green screen in Thor Ragnarok that I can't... I mean, I have a lot of reasons for not liking Thor Ragnarok, but one of them is because of the overuse of CGI and the overuse of green screen. I don't like watching a movie that's so oversaturated with computer-generated imagery or green screen or other visual effects because it, it takes me out of it and it makes me not feel any weight. The final battle in the first Spider-Man is one of the best practical effects final battles that I've ever seen, where it's just Spider-Man on Green Goblin. They're fighting each other and there's little to no CGI whatsoever in that fight. It's just hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's bloody. It's kind of gross in some parts. But that's what made it so good is throughout these movies, except they went a little overboard in three. I got that. But they use their effects so sparingly that when they did go overboard a little bit, it felt deserved because you've had all of these movies with that have been, like especially Spider-Man 2, a, a character study of who is Harry Osborn and particularly who is Mary Jane and who is Peter Parker. And so when you do have these big action CGI set pieces, it feels deserved because the whole movie is not saturated with CGI. It's not saturated with green screen. It's not saturated with these big, mindless CGI battles, as I call them. And the fifth one, my fifth reason for loving the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy is the action. I kind of already touched on that on the last part, on the last um, reason. But the action is incredible in these movies. and. Whoever the choreographer on this trilogy was needs a raise, because the choreography in every single fight throughout this trilogy was exceptional. I'll keep going back to the, the final battle in Spider-Man 1. The final battle, after he saves MJ and saves the people in that, um, I'm just call it, the tram car thing, and it's just him and Green Goblin down in that little foresty area, and they're just fighting. It was so raw, and it was so... It was, I'm not going to say hard to watch, because it really wasn't, but it was It was hand-to-hand, -hand and it was bloody and gross, and it was just, it was dirty, and it was gritty, and I love that. The action in one and two, actually in all of them, quite honestly, are some of my favorite action set pieces, action scenes to watch in any movie. The final battle in Spider-Man 3 is still my favorite, but that's just essentially because we get, we finally see Spider-Man, and, um... Harry, they're finally together again, they save MJ, and they, they kill all the baddies, and I love it, I love that, it's a total nerd out moment, I know, I know it's probably not the best made final battle in the trilogy, or battle in general, but it is my favorite, and I have my reasons for that, so yeah, the action is fantastic. Uh, reason number six is, you have to talk about Danny Elfman's score, and Christopher Young in Spider-Man 3, Danny Elfman actually did not score Spider-Man 3, Christopher Young did. And he doesn't get enough credit at all because Spider-Man 3 actually has my favorite score with, you have the Sandman theme, which is excellent. He kind of has two, like he has the sad one and then like the, the, the big, the big one. Um, and the spider, like, you know, the Spider-Man score, obviously. Um, and you have Mary Jane's theme, um, and the, the symbiote theme, the da -na 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 -na, that was that was so good. Christopher Young does not get enough credit for his score because a lot of people just think it's Danny Elfman again, but it's not. It was actually an entirely new guy, and he also did, um, he might have done one of the Ghost Rider movies, I might be wrong, but I think that's what he did. But, yeah, the score, it just elevated everything to 11. I'll say the same thing about the 2003 Ang Lee Hulk movie. The score in that was also scored by Danny Elfman, and it was also incredible. I think he did an awesome job with that, but I do like the one in the Spider-Man trilogy much more, just because the first few times I watched the Raimi trilogy, I had the song, I had the score, parts of the score stuck in my head. That rarely happens. It happened with Endgame, um, happened with Wonder Woman, happened with Batman v Superman, and... 
I think it happened with Age of Ultron too. I might be wrong, but and of course it happened with the Holy Trilogy, the Spider, the Raimi trilogy. Um, and I don't think I think people don't give composers enough credit for everything they add to a movie. Can you imagine how boring it would be to watch a Spider-Man movie or any superhero action movie in general and not have a score? Scores are so incredibly important to a movie, and they don't get enough credit for everything they do for the movie, as well as the composers don't as well. So, yes, the score is the sixth reason, and the seventh reason is the writing. Now, I kind of touched on the writing when I talked about the characters, but I'll just say it again. The writing was exceptional. Almost every single conversation that our characters had, whether it be the villains or the heroes, it felt like a real true conversation it felt like you were watching two or three or how many people were talking it felt like someone was just recording them have a conversation it didn't feel like they were reading a script it didn't feel like none of it felt forced all of the acting was fantastic and a lot of the acting credit you have to give to the actors but also to the writers because like i said earlier you can have great actors but without a good script you're screwed you're not gonna it's not gonna work um and my final reason that I wrote down, which I'll probably come up with more, but is why I think it's better than Tom Holland's and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man movies. Now, I love Andrew Garfield's. I love The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. I know it's kind of an unpopular opinion, but I do put them below the Spider-Man trilogy, but I do really, really love those films. But I don't like Tom Holland's movies. I do like him as Spider-Man. He is a fantastic actor, nothing against Tom Holland. He's great, he's fun, he's charismatic, he's charming, he's a good Spider-Man, he's a good actor, whatever. But the filmmakers, this is what I say, Tom Holland is a great actor who really wants to play the character well, but he can't because he is surrounded by terrible filmmakers. Now, they're not bad at making films, obviously. Far From Home made over a billion dollars, so they have to be doing something right. But they don't understand what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. They don't understand the responsibility that comes with it that is portrayed in the Sam Raimi trilogy. They don't understand... Yes, we've seen Uncle Ben die twice in live action. Yes, I mean, we've seen Batman's parents die more than that, and they keep doing it. But anyway... You, Uncle Ben is essential for the Spider-Man character. Uncle Ben is the reason he becomes Spider-Man. He doesn't become Spider-Man because Tony Stark comes down and gives him a suit because he wants to help him in a, quote, civil war. That's not Spider-Man. That's a, that's a, a forgettable side character in a much larger, more vast universe. Spider-Man is not Iron Boy Jr., that has a heater in his suit and can go into space because he's made of metal. That's not Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a is a just a high schooler from Queens who falls in love with a girl and has to save his city and face the responsibility and the consequences for his actions for not doing the right thing with Uncle Ben and with Aunt May. He has to have the consequences. He has to have the responsibility that comes from being Spider-Man. I'm not going to bash on Tom Holland or Robert Downey Jr. or Endgame. I loved Endgame. It's my third favorite film of all time. I loved it. But I don't like what they're doing with Spider-Man. That's not Spider-Man. Another thing, Andrew Garfield, he played him fantastic. I honestly think Andrew Garfield's a better actor than Tobey Maguire. I mean, if, go watch Hacksaw Ridge and go watch The Social Network. He's a fantastic actor. And yes, they used Uncle Ben, and they used him great, because yes, Uncle Ben died, but that's when Peter realizes that he has to step up. He can't keep doing this. He gets the responsibility. He has to face the consequences of his actions and do something about it. He is not just some kid who gets brought into this and gets everything handed to him by Iron Man on a silver platter. That is not Spider-Man. I'm sorry, and I know I do like Far From Home more than Homecoming, but still, I think I gave Homecoming a 2 
out of 5, and I get her from home a 2.5 out of 5. So they're not that big of a difference. But you can't just make Spider-Man another hero, because he's not. Marvel and Sony has put him into the Marvel Cinematic Universe nicely. They did it well with Civil War. I don't like his, I don't like how he's characterized, but whatever. They brought him in well. But you have you have to give him depth. You have to make him feel like Spider-Man. You can't just make him feel like they made Falcon. Falcon was fantastic in Winter Soldier, but now he's just comedic relief. Now he's just there. Same with War Machine. He was fantastic in Iron Man 2 and 3, but now he's just comedic relief. Now he's just there. Now he just blends in. Same with Bucky. They've done that to Spider-Man, and that's not okay. We need... I don't know. I'm going off on a rant. But the Raimi trilogy made it so clear that Uncle Ben was the reason that he became Spider-Man. Because he knows that he did something wrong. He knows he screwed up. And he has to make that right with himself and with Aunt May. He had to do that because he's a good person. He didn't meet Iron Man. And Iron Man didn't make him a suit. And he didn't fly him to Germany. And he didn't give him all of these incredible gadgets that he did nothing to deserve. That's not Spider-Man. That's not Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a nerdy New Yorker, like I said, who his uncle dies because of his actions. He faces his consequences, and he fixes it. So yeah. Uh, that is, I think, I think that's mainly everything. Um, so yes, uh, thank you everybody. That is the reasons as to why I love the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. I really hope you guys made it through this entire podcast. I will be doing much more of these. Leave in the comments, please, other subjects you'd like me to talk about. Anything comic book related, movie related in general, uh, TV, games, anything. It can be anything at all. And if there are topics that I won't spend much time talking about, then maybe I'll put multiple into one video. Who knows? But thank you all so much for watching this. I will definitely do more of these, maybe even tomorrow. Um, but thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. This has been Justin Jorgensen with the Justin Jorgensen Podcast, and I'll see you all next time.